about 37 percent of women that come through uh, the emergency rooms are coming through seeking treatment for domestic violence related injuries. Um, that's quite a bit and probably there are more who are there receiving treatment for injuries that uh, maybe occurred long ago and so maybe they're not coming for current injuries um, and so it's probably even a little bit higher than 37 percent but studies have shown that um, we know for sure at least that amount are experiencing um, intimate partner violence and using our emergency hospital rooms. Our mission is to provide quality forensic assessment, evidence collection, documentation, and advocacy services for every patient, regardless of, their, of where they show up for care in Mecklenburg County. Um, that's a lot, and, and if we pick it apart, it means a lot of different things. But that's part of what makes us on the cutting edge. There are not a lot of communities who are looking at domestic violence in the hospital settings, anyway, in terms of forensics and in terms of advocacy at the same time. Um, they are separate, but they also combine and coexist with each other. They can look at an injury and tell exactly, or most likely they can say, you know, this is what the injury looked like. This is the color, the size, the shape, um, and it appears to be, and, and things like that. And that can be helpful for the police when they're out on a crime scene and they're looking for a weapon, and the nurse can provide them with that information that can, that can really help corroborate what they're finding on the, on the crime scene. <laughs> very important that we educate her and validate her. Let her know it's not her fault. Don't push her. Um, respect her decision and don't call the police without her permission because that certainly can make it worse as well. Focus on her safety. That's what she needs most is somebody who cares about her safety. Not somebody who's so worried about what are you doing? Why are you here? Staying and taking this but how can we help you be safe until you know what you're going to do or want to do. I just think that this is a great example of the barriers that victims face and, and how, you know, a lot of times the helpers are also restricted as well. And so that becomes our dilemma as a community a lot of times. Victims have barriers to get safe and the helpers sometimes have barriers to help them get safe. And so what programs like this can hopefully try to do and, and all of you by getting involved is to bridge those, those gaps and those barriers and to start to change things in our community. I think it's very important, tell everybody to come to support anything that's about domestic violence education and, and change. Um, we need to definitely get the word out, get more people informed. There are lots of folks who have a lot of misconceptions, you guys know that, you probably hear it all the time, about this subject. So bring them, tell them to come, come with them, get them involved, um, and uh, that's, that's how the change is going to occur. Mm -hmm.